Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to watch our review of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. Subscribe, like, and comment. Do you accept this mission? If you don't, this video will self-destruct in five seconds. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle. And I'm Ken, and today we're here to review and talk about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part, <laughs> Part one, 1. One of the longest titles of any movie this year, I feel like. We can just call it Mission Impossible 7, though, I think. Yes. Uh, but we're before we get into talking about our thoughts on this movie, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We do movie and TV reviews and entertainment news on this channel. Yeah. Um, you know, so if you like that kind of thing, hit the subscribe button. Also, like the video. Like the video. Like she said, that always helps. And then leave us a comment down below. This uh, uh, movie came out on a Tuesday. It did. And we got a chance to, to see it on release date, which we rarely do. So if you've seen the movie as well, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. So going into this movie, I wouldn't say you're the biggest Mission Impossible fan. No. You've, I'm pretty sure we saw the third one in the theaters, but that's the only one that I feel like you've seen. Yeah. And you don't um, even remember it that much. I don't. So I'm, you know, going into this, I'm definitely not a Mission Impossible um, enthusiast. Yeah. But, you know, I, I feel like I... I still know, you know, what it is, and yeah. it's it's a very popular, you know, franchise, and so... And this is a franchise. Yes, there are characters that are connected throughout installments, but I feel like every movie does kind of stand on its own, mm -hmm. so I feel like you can just go into this and watch it. I actually was pretty excited to see it. You know, they had really been promoting it, obviously, and, you know, really talking about all of the amazing, you know, stunts that were going to happen. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, you know, they, it really did build up for me and make me excited, but I got to say that after seeing it, um, it didn't completely deliver for me. Oh man, it didn't. Tom didn't deliver for he, you? He did not. <laughs> oh my goodness. I feel like this movie's gonna do really well, partly because people are big fans of the franchise, but mm -hmm. also because you're still, a lot of people are still riding that Tom Cruise high and they just expect him to deliver big in the theater setting. Right. So I feel like this movie's gonna do well in the theater. So yeah. get into my just initial thoughts. I really enjoyed this movie a lot, as I do pretty much every single Mission Impossible movie. I even like the second one. That's I'm really nostalgic for that one. Um, I don't know exactly where I would rank this in the franchise. I don't know mm -hmm. if we're ready to get into that kind of stuff yet, but I'd, I'd say that the, the last few were probably better to me. I would probably put four, five, and six above this one, but that doesn't mean this one wasn't good. It doesn't mean it wasn't exciting and thrilling. I mm -hmm. didn't, I, I didn't enjoy watching it. It just, it did feel very much like a part one to a story for me. And there's just a lot of talking in this uh, movie, a lot of exposition and just not, I don't want to say not enough action. There were some impressive action set pieces, but mm -hmm. there wasn't a ton. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean... You know, like I said, they they really kept uh, promoting all of the amazing, you know, stunts that Tom Cruise does himself and all of yeah. that kind of stuff. And I mean, honestly, there, there they, is a big one though. They pretty much show. They did show it. <laughs> um, the the big stunts, you know, in the trailers and stuff. Um, as far as you saying that there was a lot of talking, like there definitely is a lot of talking, and there just wasn't enough of those like big. Uh, yeah. moments for me um, and so and like everything that was really that was really cool and actiony and showsy or whatever pretty much all happened at the end and yeah. so you know and this is a long movie like let us it's let a, us talk I, about the length <laughs> I, I think it's uh it has to be the longest Mission Impossible movie I don't think I um, think it's like two hours and 43 minutes yeah. and so I've always said, you know, anything over two hours is really pushing it for me. And so yeah. I was definitely kind of squirming in my seat, ready to get out of there. And there was, you know, at least still 40 minutes left. I mean, there's 30 minutes of like story and exposition and talking scenes mm -hmm. before the credits even start rolling. <laughs> they were setting up a lot of stuff and they brought in a new villain and they did the thing where... Because I don't think this is ever... Look, I'm not like a, a mass... I'm a big fan of the franchise, but I don't... I haven't watched these movies like multiple times or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but they did the thing with the villain where they set up this like new plot point that happened before, I guess, the first Mission Impossible movie. Mm -hmm. Like something that happened in Ethan Hunt's past that now it's being brought out. And this is like why the way that he is. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I think they did really well is they had all of these strong female characters, but they didn't make a point to, like, make that a thing mm -hmm. in the movie. Like, mm -hmm. they were just there, and they, exist they existed in the world, and you bought into all of them as, like, these badass, like, real characters in the movie. 
And I feel like like any other movie that they, they try to insert like a bunch of female characters and make them like, you know, real action heavy and focused. Like people don't buy into it and then they want to call it woke and, and all that kind of crap. Mm -hmm. I feel like this movie did a good job of, of balancing that out. Haley Atwell was a clear standout of this movie. I'd say next to Tom Cruise, she's pretty much the main character of the film. I honestly didn't like her. I'm not saying that I love the character, I guess. I do like the performance a lot and I liked that she got some moments to shine, but her character doesn't make like a ton of sense, I guess. You don't really, like, know where she comes from, you know? Yeah. It, it just feels like she comes out of nowhere for, like, no reason. She's supposed to be this nobody who's just really good at being a thief, essentially. Gets involved with the whole key plot right. uh, thing going on. Um. So, I don't know. For me, there was just something about her that just kind of, like, I don't know. Like, and she kept kind of betraying you know tom cruise's character and stuff she did. they and did that thing like like a like a batman catwoman dynamic or something yeah. a little bit so i mean you know that is pretty like typical or standard i guess but i don't know it just didn't work for me and i felt like they gave her too much yeah. um i guess screen time i don't know um like for a tom cruise movie i feel like he definitely, like, wasn't the focus, which is kind of weird, right? They definitely set up Heli Atwell to be a huge player in this franchise, for right. sure. And, you know, Rebecca Ferguson, I'll be honest, I would have liked to have seen her do a little bit more because she was set up very well in, in Rogue Nation, and I feel like it was... Um, I feel like she did get a little bit of the short end of the stick here. I did like the, uh, the girl that plays Mantis in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Uh, that you, actress. You did like her? I did like her. She was very unhinged and psychotic, she, but I don't know. I, I, I like that character and I like the directions that they took her by the time we got to the end of the movie. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I like her in Guardians, but yeah. I did not like her in this one. She just was so like, I don't know, it just random and was just so like angry and you're like why are you so angry like obviously she's like with the bad guy but i don't know her yeah. character just didn't really work for me what, but, what did you think of his his uh, his sidekicks uh ving rames and simon Pegg? honestly i think my favorite part was simon Pegg. yeah simon Pegg's great in these movies yeah like he just i don't know he just does it just right that's why i was talking to you at ghost protocol is probably my favorite because I just love the dynamic with him and Ving Rhames and Tom Cruise mm -hmm. um, and the other girl that hasn't been in any of the other movies but she was great with them in that movie so yeah um, that that's probably my favorite just because they really focus on those characters in that movie yeah and I mean something else that I just want to quickly talk about too is they definitely did try to do some humor in this movie and mm -hmm. for me it just didn't work I yeah. thought that it was just very not funny i like you could tell when was supposed to be a funny moment, but I'm like, this is well, not they funny. they go back and forth too much between the humor and then there's like supposed to be like these huge dramatic moments that you're supposed to feel this emotional mm -hmm. weight with, mm -hmm. and they just don't balance it well. But I think that Simon Pegg and Ving Rhames handle all the humor very well. Yeah, between them two, those are probably definitely the two highlights. But getting into the story real quick because we didn't really talk about like what this movie is about, but it kind of takes a very like sci-fi type approach where the villain of this movie there is a person mm -hmm. that's actually a villain but the real villain is this Technology? like godlike computer thing that they call the entity the entity and they haven't really ever done anything like that before mm -hmm. in this franchise at least off the top of my head they had the syndicate but that was like a they they basically treated it like it was this all knowing um yeah not just like a super like yeah, not just like a super smart AI, but like a almost like predicting the future type of like godlike machine that was right. co controlling things. Yeah, I mean that that part was pretty cool, but it also was kind of like I, it I don't know. It felt if I a can... little out of left field for this franchise. Gotcha. To me, the whole plot was they had to get these two keys to unlock this thing. So you spend the majority of the movie, you know, focused on that, and then you're supposed to get the resolution in the next ones. So. Yeah. Like I've been talking pretty negatively about it. I didn't hate the movie by any means. Yeah. It just, you know, and to be fair, this isn't really my type of movie anyway. Yeah. And so definitely keep that in mind. It's still an enjoyable movie. And um, I think that I might have just would have enjoyed it a little bit better at home. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it takes a while to get going. Once it gets going for me, it uh, it really delivered. I liked a lot of the action set piece moments in the, mm -hmm. in the third act of the film. So, all right, well, but, let's rate it. All right. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I can't, I don't feel like I can get it any higher than a four, though. 
Okay. I did really enjoy wow, it, though. I thought you it's were going to give it higher. No, no, I don't think it's a 4.5. I would give that to, honestly, the last three Mission Impossible movies, Fallout, Rogue Nation, and Ghost Protocol, I all thought, thought were great. But this one's a 4 to me. Okay. This well, I'm going to I'm gonna give it a 3.5. Um, you know, it was, it was pretty good, but, um, you know, I don't know. It just... It, it wasn't completely there for me. Yep, I get it. And, uh, you know, that's our review of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Let us know in the comment section below what you think of the movie. If you're going to see it uh, this week or this weekend, let us know in the comment section below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And uh, turn on bell notifications for all future videos. See you guys later. Bye, guys.